Good morning, good morning, good morning. We're going to continue our study, Genesis chapter 6. We had a little technical difficulty earlier, but today we're going to finish it. Genesis chapter 6, verses 1 through 12. Let's pray first. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the precious blood of Jesus. We thank you, Father, for the life of the flesh is in the blood. We thank you, Heavenly Father. Mm, you gave us your blood upon the altar to make atonement for our souls. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you in the name of Jesus, Father God. If we plead the blood of Jesus over our minds. Oh, and we plead the blood of Jesus over our will and emotions. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We plead the blood of Jesus over every chemical in our brain to regulate it, balance it, where you created it to be, in the name of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus over our mouth, tongue, and throat, moving out anything and everything that is not of you. We we'll apply the blood of Jesus to our stomach, the upper and lower tract. And we thank you, Father. Nothing that you did not plant in there should stay. The blood of Jesus is against it now. In the name of Jesus. Cleansing our tract in the name. We plead the blood of Jesus over our skeleton system, over the muscles, the bones, over our blood vessels, and every inner working. We apply the blood of Jesus to our lower back. Mm, thank you, Jesus. We apply the blood of Jesus to our spine. And we speaking healing this morning. Healing to our knees, Father God, thank you. Healing to our ankles, our feet, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, for the wonder-working power in the precious blood of Jesus. We thank you, Father. We apply the blood of Jesus to our hands. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father, for the soothing blood of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Oh, your precious, precious blood. Thank you, Father, for your healing power flowing over every part of our bodies. Thank you, Father. When Isaiah said, you were wounded for our transgression, you were bruised for our iniquities, chastised with pieces upon you, and by your stripes, those 39 stripes that you took on your are healed in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 6 verses 1 through 12 and it reads and it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and the daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and that they took them wives of all which they chose. In verse 3. 
And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be 120 years. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men, which were of old men of renown. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Verse 6. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air, for it repented me that I have made them. But Noah, verse 8, found grace in the eyes of the Lord. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generation. And Noah walked with God. And Noah begat three sons, Shem, Ham, and Jetham. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. Remember when we left off in chapter 5, it says, um, in the beginning, God created the heaven and earth, and we also found that written in the New Testament in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 3. The earth was without form and empty and waste, and darkness was upon the face of the very great deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Thus far, we have studied about the creation, universe, space, time, galaxy, stars, man and woman, the fall of man, Cain and Abel, the first murder, and the descendants of Adam. Now we're presently at the days of Noah in chapter 6. And as you remember when we began the studies, that I said it would not be line for line, but we would talk about different things in each chapter. So today we're going to talk about the days of Noah. Hallelujah. I hope you have your Bibles. <laughs> Turn with me to Genesis chapter 6. Verses 1 through 12. Which I've just read the first portion of it to you. Verses 1 through 12. But I want to go over some things. Plant some seeds. And God came to pass. And it came to pass. When man began to multiply on the face of the earth. And her daughters were born unto them. When men began, began to multiply on the face of the, of the land, and daughters were born. They were born. They were born. Daughters. Verse 2. Where it talked about the sons of God saw that the daughters of men were fair. I mean, they were attractive. And they took wives of them that they desired and chose. Mm -hmm. 
where it talked about the sons of God. There are many theories that are out there. One theory is that um, they spoke of the sons of God as being fallen angels who had relations with the daughters of men, creating which they call the Nephilim, the giants. And the other theory, that the son of God, the son of God, One says the descendant of Seth. That is the um, good side. And then the daughters married Cain's side, which it said was evil. But we're going to talk about not being yoked up with someone else that is not of your same faith. The Bible called it unequally yoked. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14, it says, Do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. Do not make mate, mismate, alliance with them or come under a different yoke with them. Inconsistent <laughs> with your faith. For what partnership have right living and right standing with God with iniquity and lawlessness? Or how can light have fellowship with darkness? That is the amplified version of that. Let's go to... The King James Version. This is one we've heard for years about being unequally yoked. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. And it reads, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness? with unrighteousness and what communion has light with darkness that is a question why would light want to yoke up with dark Verse 3, and it says, And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 5. Here it's talking about the immorality. Paul was speaking that there would be judgment. Here he says, I'm going to start with verse 5. He says, actually I'll start at verse 1. It, Paul's speaking here to the Corinthians. This is where um, the young man was having a relationship with his um Mm, father's wife. It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you 
and such fornication as it is not so much as named among the Gentiles, that one should have his father's wife. <laughs> this is happening in the church. And ye are puffed up, and have not rather more mourned that he that has done this deed might be taken away from among you? For I verily as absent in the body, but present in the spirit, have judged already, as though I were present concerning him that has so done this deed. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when ye are gathered together and my spirit with the power of our Lord Jesus to deliver such a one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord. So turn him over. That he'll repent. So that he will repent. And be saved. In the day of the Lord. Galatians chapter 5 verse 16 says. This I say then walk in the spirit. And ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. But I say walk and live habitually. I want to say that again. But I say walk and live habitually in the Holy Spirit. Responsive to control and guided by the Spirit. Then you will certainly not gratify cravings and desires of the flesh of human nature without God. Verse 17. For the desires of the flesh are opposed to the Holy Spirit. That's right. The desires of the flesh are opposed to the Holy Spirit. And the desires of the Spirit are opposed to the flesh. Godless human natures. For these are antagonistic to each other. Remember earlier, light and darkness have nothing in common. Continually with standing and in conflict with each other. So that we are not free, but are prevented from doing what you desire to do. It's the Amplified Version. And verse 18 says, but, listen, but if you are guided, led by the Holy Spirit, you are not subject to the law. You notice in Genesis chapter 6 that the same thing in Noah's day is happening right now. We're living in the days of immorality. We're living in the days that they're calling evil good. We're living in the days where they're accepting lies and they're saying it's okay to lie because we want this but not listening to what the word of God is saying. We're living in the days where there's murder and there's nothing being done about it. Noah lived in those days. And if you read the entire chapter of Genesis chapter 6, you will see how it repented the Lord God and how he judged that sin. Genesis chapter 6 verse 4 says, There were giants. In the, in the um, Hebrew, they're called Nephilim. In the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God came 
and unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them. The same became mighty men, and were which were of old men of renown. Let's look at Second Peter, chapter two, verses um, four and five. Second Peter. All right. Here it's going to tell us something about Noah. Second Peter. Chapter 2. Verses 4 and 5. And it reads, For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. Verse 5. And spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eight persons, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. So Noah was a preacher of righteousness. They talked about Noah. They said Noah was an old crazy man. But Noah was led by the Spirit of God to do, to build that ark, to save his family and those animals that the Lord told him to take on the ark. Listen to this. Praise God. The giants on the earth in those days, that's the Nephilims, and also afterward, when the sons of God lived with the daughters of men, and they bore children. These were mighty men of old. More giants were born. And the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination and intention of all human thinking was only evil continually. Does that sound familiar? And the Lord regretted that he had made man on the earth and he was grieved at heart. This happened again where the Lord regretted something. In 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 11, God regretted making Saul king. For Saul had turned back from following his commands. Ask the Lord to show you what your sin does to him. Because here we see written that sin grieves him. His heart is broken. And Genesis chapter 6 verse 7 it said, And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth both man and beast and the creeping things and the fowls of the air, for it repented me that I had made them. As saints today, and our prayer group talked about it, we are to be enforcers of the light in the land. We are to testify of God's goodness and tell the world what he has done for us, for our families, for our cities, for our schools, and not hold back because we serve a mighty God. And by the saints not talking, people think we serve a weak God, but on the, on the contrary, he is mighty. 
Do you know our testimonies can influence the world <laughs> and affect change in the lives of those who are bound in darkness? Yes, the Lord wants us to start talking about his goodness and that he is the chain breaker <laughs> and that it is his anointing that breaks and destroy yokes. My God, my God. In verse 8, he says, But Noah found grace, that's favor, in the eyes of the Lord. Like Mary in Luke chapter 1, verse 30, she found favor. Grace is unmerited favor. This is the favor we didn't earn. Here Jesus is speaking in Matthew chapter 24, 37 through 39. And he says, But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Lord, hmm. the Son of Man. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark, the ark of safety. We build art, A-R-K. <laughs> as we pray and as we decree and declare the word of God over our families. As we decree and declare Psalms 91 over our families. As we decree and declare Psalms 23 over our families. Oh, God is so good. And as we decree and declare Isaiah 54, 17, where it says, No weapon formed against us shall prosper. Begin to put the word in your mouth and begin to decree and declare it over your loved ones. Decree and declare that they will walk in holiness and watch the Holy Spirit move mightily it's not going to be overnight but continually and as the Lord give you promises begin to rehearse those promises back to him so you can see them performed here on earth as it is in heaven we're going to pick up our weapons and we're going to use them Noah let no one stop him. Noah did not listen to the people taunting him because he was serving the true and living God. Are we going to be like that? Or are we going to listen and shrink back and not open our mouths? That's the trick of the enemy. He wants to silence the saints. But we say no. We're going to continue to talk. It's like Peter. You know, we turn back. Where are we going to go? The, God has the word. He has everything we need. So we might as well pick it up <laughs> and run with it. Amen. And we all have different personalities. So just do you in your personality. But decree and declare the word of God. Talk to people. And and everyone that you come across, you're not going to say something to them. But it's when the Holy Spirit give you that unction, that's the one. Then you begin to talk because they need to know more about the King. <laughs> Hallelujah. He is so, so good. Yes, he is. And here, 
Verse 39, we're still in Matthew chapter 24. And knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. But we will talk about the gospel, the saving grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And that he did not come here to condemn, but to save. Hmm. And the Amplified Version of Matthew 24, 37 through 39 reads like this. And I really like this. It says, As were the days of Noah, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For just as in those days before the flood they were eating and drinking, Men marrying and women being given in marriage until the very day when Noah went into the ark and they did not know or understand until the flood came and swept them all away. So will be the coming of the Son of Man. Yes, the Son of Man is coming back again. He told, the, the, the angels told the disciples that they were looking at the Lord as he was ascending into the clouds, into the air, and he disappeared. In Acts chapter 1, and then he told, the angel said, he's coming back just like he ascended. He's coming back. Believe that, saints. He's coming back. If you look over the Word of God and the prophecies that went forth concerning Jesus' arrival in the New Testament, they were all fulfilled. Talking about his virgin birth, talking about the uh, area that he would be born in, Bethlehem, and much, much more. So if both prophecies were fulfilled, do you not know that the prophecy of him coming back again is a sure thing? Amen. So we ought to be living like this is our last day. Trusting him. Holding on to our anchor. Our anchor is the Lord. Second Peter chapter 3 verses 10 through 15 and I'm going to read this out of the Amplified Version. Talking about the coming of the Lord. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. And then the heavens will vanish, pass away with a thunderous crash. In the King James, it says, with a great noise and the elements shall melt away with fervent heat. And the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Verse 11. And since all these things are thus in the process of being dissolved, what kind of person ought we be? You ought to be, hallelujah, in the meanwhile. In consecrated and holy behavior and devout and godly qualities. While you wait earnestly, long for, expect, and hasten the coming of the day of God, by reason of which the flaming heavens will be dissolved and the material elements of the universe will flare and melt with fire. But we look for new heavens and new earth according to his promise in which righteousness, uprightness, freedom from sin, 
and right standing with God is to abide. Verse 14, So beloved, since you are expecting these things, be eager. Oh God, thank you Jesus. To be found by him at his coming without a spot or blemish and at peace and at peace Mm. in serene confidence, free from fears and agitating passions and moral conflicts. And consider that the long suffering of our Lord, his slowness in avenging wrongs and judging the world is salvation. That which is conducive to the soul's safety. So shouldn't we be about our father's business? <laughs> Talking to as many people as we can about him. Hallelujah. So that they will too experience the love, the unconditional love of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, that which is conducive to the soul's safety, even as our beloved brother Paul also wrote concerning the spiritual insights given to him. And do you not know the Lord imparts spiritual insights to us as well? Genesis 6 verse 9. These are the generations of Noah. Hallelujah. Where Noah was a just man, perfect. That didn't mean he never sinned. It was with, without blemish, unblemished in his generation. He didn't partake of the things that was happening in his generation. And Noah walked with God. And this is the history of the generation of Noah. Noah was a just and righteous man and blameless in his evil generation. Noah walked in habitual fellowship with God. Can I say that one more time? Noah walked in habitual fellowship with God. What a great picture this is. And this is what God desires for you and I, that we walk habitually with God, fellowshipping with Him day and night. Hallelujah. Verse 10. And Noah became the father of three sons, Shem, Ham, and Jetheth. Now it's been said that Jetheth race was Asian and that Shem race was the Jews and then Ham was from Africa. So the earth was depraved and putrid in God's sight and the land was filled with violence, desecration, infringement, outrage, assault, and lust for power. Do we not see that today? And God looked upon the world and saw how degenerated, debased, and vicious it was. For all humanity had corrupted their way up on the earth and lost their true direction. And Psalms 100 and, pardon me, Psalms 14, verse 2, it says, The Lord looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any that did understand and seek God. He's looking for children that understand and that are seeking him. Are we that generation? Yes, we are. There are many of us that are seeking his face. Like his word says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God 
and his righteousness and all the other things shall be added unto you. So that means no lack, right? But our first priority is to seek God. Seek his kingdom. Seek his righteousness. And then the other things will be added. So the spiritual application, Genesis 6, 5 through 8, it reveals two important things that we should take heed to. One, avoid human wickedness. Two, avoid an evil imagination. That's what got the people in trouble in Noah's day. And when the Lord God saw the extent of human wickedness and that the trend and direction of men's lives were only towards evil, he was sorry he had made them. It broke his heart. One lesson we can learn from Noah's story is that many people today in our generation are being destroyed because their hearts are not right with God and not right before God. The people in Noah's day were corrupt and impure, and the people had lost their true direction. These people, evil minds, had taken over common sense. Does this sound like today? Do you know we have the word of God that we can decree and declare over ourselves? We can decree and declare, and I love it, that the blood of Jesus cleanses our conscious mind and our subconscious mind from acts that lead to death so that we may serve a living God In the name of Jesus and the blood, oh my goodness, cleanses our mind. You can read Hebrews chapter 9, verse 22. See, we're not left here without weapons. We can also decree and declare the blood of Jesus is a token upon our homes, our houses. So, when the death angel is out, it'll pass over our homes. You can look at Exodus chapter 12, verse 7. And the blood of Jesus covers, protects us from infirmities. Read Isaiah chapter 53, verse 5. And there's many more. So it's time to search the scriptures. Search the heart of God for you and your family, for your city, for your church. The Holy Spirit is challenging us to straighten out what we think and how we think. If our hearts are full of bad attitudes and our minds are full of stinking thinking, do you think we will make much progress? No, you're right. No. The Bible said in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23, Keep and guard your heart with all vigilance. And above all, that you guard, for out of it flow the springs of life. It's time for a spiritual checkup, sisters and brothers. The Bible said we are to grow in grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Not to keep our Bibles on a shelf collecting dust, but open it up and see what he has to say. Hallelujah. And how do we do a spiritual checkup on ourselves? 
not our uncles, our husbands, our wives, daughters, and sons, but on ourselves as an individual. You can ask yourself, have I changed? Has my attitude changed since last year? Is it more Christ-like? <laughs> Only you can answer that question. And another question you can ask yourself. Am I really thirsty after righteousness? Am I really seeking God? Am I a God chaser? Again, only you can answer those questions. <laughs> so let's pray. So that we will be God inside minded. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. I am a spirit learning to live in a natural world. I have a soul and I live in a physical body. I'm in the world, but I'm not of the world. God of peace, I ask you to sanctify me in every way and my whole body. May my whole body, my spirit, my soul, and my body be kept blameless until that day when our Lord Jesus Christ comes again. Father, you called me and you are completely dependable. You said it and you will do this. Thank you for the spirit who guides me into all truth through my regenerated human spirit. Lord, I ask this day that your searchlight will penetrate my human spirit, exposing every hidden motive that I may bring it before the cross and repent and receive your wonderful forgiveness. I receive your love and I receive your correction. But I know that when I'm corrected, I am your daughter. I am your son. So thank you. Thank you for your love. Thank you for making my heart right before you, God. Thank you for correcting my thinking. Thank you, Father. Thank you for correcting my attitude towards things and towards people. Thank you, Father. Thank you. I accept the challenge, and I want to change. I want to be, as the Word says, made in the image of Christ Jesus. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Praise God. Isn't he good? You feel the presence. He loves us so much with everlasting love. Now, if you haven't received him as your Lord and Savior, this is the day. <laughs> that the Lord has made and we will rejoice we will rejoice with you the angels will rejoice heaven will rejoice that one more soul has come home hallelujah pray this simple prayer with me Father God I do believe that you raised Jesus from the dead. And I am a sinner and I need your grace. I need your favor. And I need your forgiveness. So I thank you for applying the blood of Jesus to my heart he 
Yes, thank you. For creating me a new heart and renewing a right spirit within me. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. And I thank you that I am a new creation in Christ Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Congratulations. So now, what are you to do? Tell someone of your birthday, your new birthday. And then go to a Bible teaching church to learn more about the man that you have received in your heart. Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Adonai, our Master, our Peacemaker, our Sanctifier. You will be so excited about what He has for you. May God bless you and may God keep you. Until the next time, peace.